Eternity's end, apparently. The Shadowlands story pulls together threads that started in Warcraft. Let's 3, go! Hey, people! way through many of our expansions. We approached it like a drama in three acts. Now, as the third and final act begins of the saga, we need to stop the Jailer from reaching his ultimate goal, which is to rewrite the rules of reality. Eternity's End serves as the final chapter of one book of the Warcraft saga. Eternity's End, that's it. Hey, that guy. The Jailer has the advantage. He has seized the sigils of the leaders of the Four Covenants. We see Sylvanas realize that she's been a pawn in the Jailer's game this entire time, and she refuses to serve him, and she's taken prisoner. The Jailer is able to open a portal to who knows where, taking Anduin with him. And the Primus had us take some time to retrieve some new sigils. Now we have gathered our forces. We are working with the Primus to open our own gateway to pursue the Jailer to this realm unlike any we've seen before. Barak Mortis, yet! Let's see how this is. The Primus opens a portal and we come into this alien land. It's completely Ooh. white, foggy. We're walking on water. Oh, for some wow. Reason. They can only make out some shapes, some figures there, some crazy devices and consoles. Oh, Eventually, wow. You make your way to a giant gate, and behind it lies Zareth Mortis. Oh, wow. Zareth Mortis was created ah. by the first ones, and it is intended to create afterlives. Think of it as being tucked away in the fabric of the Shadowlands itself. It's kind of the behind it's beautiful. the scenes of these afterlives that we've journeyed. Oh my through. God! It's the land where the progenitors, the first ones who created all of the realms of the Shadowlands, this is their workshop. They've created everything we've experienced in Azeroth and Shadowlands. Oh and wow! The realms we haven't discovered yet. These first ones built the universe as far as we know, but their intentions or methods are completely unknown. But of course, the Jailer's presence here is disrupting this process, and we're working to push back against the Jailer's forces and protect this place. I think the artists have done a fantastic wow. job. Wow. And I know they did a lot of research, and they looked at a lot of real-life examples of very strange places in the real world. As a team, we were really trying to make this place as alien as possible, so we really wanted to make everything feel completely unique. And that completely is beautiful. Different. Our trees here are floating. We have stones that are floating. We even have the massive Forge of Afterlife. I've seen you pets. In the yes. Of the zone. And true to its name, Forge of Afterlife. That is kind of putting together a new afterlife to be sent out into the Shadowlands. We have this water all around you because water is really the catalyst for any kind of creation. It's actually unlike any other water that we've seen before. This is actually water that we can walk on. It almost creates like a wow. threshold between Sereth Mortis and some other kind of more primordial space right below. It's it. beautiful. Everything you see in Sereth Mortis has a, a purpose, an intention behind it. For us, it was really important to find ways to convey that intention in the environment itself. And one of the ways in which we did it was through this duality between a lush and a dry biome. Wow. In the dry biome, we see perhaps what the original look of the zone was when the progenitors were first establishing this workspace for themselves. And in the lush biome, we see the result of their experimentation with plant life and fauna and things like that. These are all test beds for what we'll eventually see elsewhere. Creatures. Yeah, so I thought. We started them. thinking about what kinds of creatures would be in this wow. place that are fundamentally uh, prototypes. There's terraforming here. There's creatures that are building afterlives. We tried to really stretch and think what that might be like. Oh my God, I want them as a mount. My personal favorite includes the giant armored snail. And we also have a progenitor chicken, which answers the question of what came first. Yeah, exactly. These first ones who crafted Zareth Mortis, what they left behind were the Automa, Automa. to take care of the place and make sure that it fulfilled its function to create afterlives. The Automa have several different classes, and you can see this in their silhouettes. We have the Builders, we have the Protectors, we have the Casters, and each one of them have a specific role within the Shadowlands. And then you'll also discover the Jiro, which are a part of the Automa. Oh. They're a little more quirky, they have a little more personality, they are a little more sentient than the other Automa, so some of them even split off to pursue their own desires. Unfortunately, when we've found our way... The virus, devours, of course, is going to be there. They are ravenous. They're consuming this weird energy, and it's causing them to mutate and to fall apart. And the Automa, uh, where they are confronted by them, some of them are fighting them off. 
And so it's gonna take some time for them to understand that we're here trying to help them drive out this threat. The Enlightened. Fortunately, we've got some allies. There are some enlightened brokers here that we're gonna be working with. But it's a broker that arrived here quite a long time ago and has had a change of heart from looking at mm. the world as a very transactional place to seeing this place as a holy place, a sacred place. We meet an enlightened one named Fareem, and Fareem needs our assistance, and in return, he leads us to Haven, which is wow. a hub that has been created out of progenitor ruins. And this is where the enlightened really- This is beautiful. Vehicle. Haven serves as our foothold here, as well as use it as a base of operations- Broke playable race. Really start unlocking the mysteries of this land. The Enlightened Brokers are intent on protecting and preserving the work of the First Ones here, but now they're seeing Zoval bring his forces against the Atoma and tear up the land, and they are eager for assistance. The Brokers themselves are very ostentatious, they're very into materialism, but the Enlightened are not that at all. They have relinquished this material way, and you'll see this reflected in their clothes. They're a little tattered, they're a little faded. Because they're just cool. isn't important. To I like them. them. They're just here for the pursuit of knowledge. Cypher of the first ones. When players arrive, they're kind of fishes out of water. And one of the first things that we have to do is start learning how to communicate with the Automa. Those runes it as a kind of runic language based in symbols we will bond with a small construct who's pretty cute actually and oh. with his assistance oh. and the assistance of Farim, uh, we will learn eventually how to understand oh wow the symbols literally the, the language to learn the we'll uncover different parts of this alphabet and start to learn more about the progenitors and xerath mortis itself it will allow you to unlock new and different forms of content so that can range from daily quests to new options on the vendors to places to explore and new side quests that open up. So it's really the gateway to exploring the far reaches of Xerath Mortis. As we looked into the development of Cypher of the First Ones, we wanted something that was unique that players haven't seen before. A little bit of familiarity, but something that takes that to the next level. We really involved the whole team in this creative process. We worked with our UI team to be able to represent those through text, through these things talking and seeing them on screen in chat bubbles and, and in our chat window. Little by little, these kind of runes start taking shape into words that we recognize, but it's gonna be a oh, process wow. that unfolds over the course of playing through Eternity's End. Yeah, exactly. The Automa speak in this kind of musical language. Oh. They don't talk the way that we mortals are used to speaking. The sound team was super excited. They jumped in. Uh, they started prototyping all kinds of different sounds. These are we cute. Listened, we gave feedback, and we really ended up in a cool place. As you're playing through and gradually unlocking the language, you'll be able to see those words that they're saying, but still hear those tones. Sepulchre of the First Ones. The Jailer's true goal has never really been to escape the Maw or to gain power. He's been focused on reaching this place called the Sepulchre, to go into this place of power and to really rewrite the rules of the universe. We'll learn that the Jailer has breached the Sepulchre of the First Ones, and this becomes our new raid for Eternity's End. Okay, new we're raid. We're gather our forces, we're gonna pursue the Jailer inside. Once you go inside the Sepulchre, wow. there's some mind-blowing visuals. This is a place this that is amazing. should not be able to exist according to the laws of physics as we know. Oh them. my god, well. Just looking please, out yes. the sky of seeing these ancient works of the First Ones, those laws don't apply to anything we see here. Among the bosses that we're gonna face in Sepulchre of the First Ones include the Jailer's forces, maybe a Dreadlord or two that you haven't- A Dreadlord or two? Uh, we'll face a Constellar. This is similar to a being like Algalon. Algalon. But the Jailer's gotten to it and has infused his domination magic into the Constellar. Before we get to the Jailer, however, we need to get to Anduin first. Our hope is that- Okay, Anduin is a boss, of course. About domination magic. We need to be able to resist it, or better yet, fight it. Yes! We know players have been waiting a long time oh. for the tier sets, and as devs, we have too. It's a great blend oh, of wow. magic, golds, and metals, along with those class defining silhouettes wolves for shamans, pointy things for rogues. It's going to look amazing. 
our class and combat team was super excited to bring class sets back. This is something that felt really wow. right for the story, where in the final act of the Shadow Light These are saga, amazing. we're here literally on the brink at eternity's end, and what better place to fully unleash the power of these classes, and I think players will really enjoy the return of those class sets just as much as the class team Class sets, uh, that guy. How do you make something he said class mystical sets. and magical and incomprehensible and yet understandable? I think we've done a good job of finding that line. The team as a whole has been working so hard, and we are so excited to get this out for everyone. We're going to get new mounts, new pets. A bit horrifying for me, but exciting for some is the fact that, you know, some of the spider mounts can now fly. Who needs oh, flying God. spiders? But that's also going to be a cool thing for people. <laughs> we have updates to professions, to soul binds, to conduits. There's a new dancing mini game in Darkmoon Fair. <laughs> I'm story guy, so I'm super geeked about watching players kind of piece together those little lore tidbits. That's what excites me as well. I'm really looking forward to season three of Mythic Plus. Tazavesh is getting split into two dungeons. Of course. If you're a raider, if you chase Keystone Master, if you're an achievement collector, there's something for everyone to do in this. Shadowlands is like the final chapter of one book of the Warcraft saga. And our team is already yeah, hard at work up. on the next stories to come. Can't talk about them quite yet. But when the time is right, we're going to be really excited to share them with you. Um.